everybody or shall I say Shalom because today we're gonna be counting to a hundred in Hebrew now this is part of the series of me trying to count to a hundred in a hundred languages I don't know if it's gonna happen but I hope you join me for the ride I chose Hebrew as a second language I will be doing this for because Hebrew was one of my mother tongue languages I spoke Hebrew um, the, it was the second language I spoke because I was born in Israel, but in my home we spoke Romanian. So I'm pretty, I'm relatively fluent in Hebrew, but I've not spoken it for a while. Um, so before I, um, before I start counting, I like to do a brief history of the language, just to get a general idea about the language, the people they speak it, and its history. Now I'm not a historian, so I'm trying my best, and it's really just a really quick brief history. If you guys have more knowledge than me, please don't hesitate to comment below and just add to the repertoire of our, repertoire of our knowledge. Alright, so let's get started. Hebrew, also known as Ivrit, the term Ivrit derived from the biblical term Ibri, meaning Israelite in, um, in biblical Hebrew. It is spoken by 9 million people. It is the language of the Israelites. It is the only living Canaanite language. It went extinct in the 5th century AD or CE. Now you will see that AD and CE is used in the two change in beliefs because they mean the same thing. And I really don't know what people like to use. I see them just randomly swapped at times. So I will just, just bear with me. Just know it means the same thing after Christ. Um... Yeah, so the, um, the Hebrew language ceased to be an everyday language between around 200 to 480. It was revived in the 19th century. It survived via rabbinic literature as a foreign language. It is studied mainly by Jews. The Torah and the rest of the Hebrew Bible is written in Biblical Hebrew. It is, as I said, a Canaanite language belonging to the Northwest Semitic family of languages. Now, if we look back in history, there's slightly different dialects of Hebrew dating back to the 10th century BCE. Archaic Biblical Hebrew was spoken between 10 to 6 BCE, corresponding to the Songs of Moses. Standard Biblical Hebrew was uh, spoken between 8 to 6 BCE. Uh, the 8th century to the 6th century BCE. Late Biblical Hebrew was spoken between the 5th century BCE to the 3rd century BCE. And that corresponds to the book of Ezra and Nehemiah in the Old Testament. Israeli Hebrew um, was also spoken as a northern dialect uh, at the same time as... Um, as late biblical Hebrew, so it's it was spoken at the same time, but in a, just a different geographical region. Um. Now the the Hebrew of the Dead Sea Scrolls were were was spoken between the third century B.C.E. and the first century A.D. Um. Now, Mishna, uh, the Mishnaic Hebrew was spoken between um, the 1st century to the 3rd century um, AD or CE. And that corresponds to the Roman period after the destruction of the temple. Now, just uh, going back a little bit because I missed this. Um, the Dead Sea Scrolls, as I said before, were spoken between the 3rd century BC to the 1st century AD, and that corresponds to the time to the Hellenistic and Roman periods before the destruction of the Temple in Jerusalem. Um, Mishnaic Hebrew was spoken between the 1st and 3rd century CE or AD, and um, that corresponds to the Roman period after the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. Uh, 
The Mishnah and the Talmud is written mainly in Mishnahic Hebrew. And the Mishnah means, Mishnah is the first major collection of Jewish oral traditions that, uh, that were written. Um, now, um, Mishnahic Hebrew also corresponds to the Bar Kokhba letters. Uh, and when Hebrew was in the in decline, uh, the Israelites spoke Aramaic, and then later they spoke Greek. Uh, the Bar Kokhba War or Revolution, I believe led by Bar Kokhba, uh, caused a rapid decline in Hebrew, as well as an extensive depopulation of the Judean community. And I believe um, that is one of the reasons that the language went extinct. Um, the revival of the Hebrew language initiated in the 19th century by Eliezer Eli Eli ben Yehuda. In 1922, Israel became, I, I'm sorry, Hebrew became one of the three uh, official languages spoken in Palestine. And in 1948, obviously, um, Hebrew, became, um, Hebrew became the official language of Israel. Hebrew is written from right to left which can be very unnatural for some people because most languages are written from left to right. For me, it feels pretty natural because that's how I grew up writing. And it also, modern Hebrew has 22 letters. Now, it doesn't have many letters because the Hebrew language doesn't have many vowels. It does have a few vowels, but unlike English, there aren't that many vowels. And a lot of times we use accents on the letter to indicate the sound of a vowel. Once you get to once you become very familiar with Hebrew, you actually don't need to use any kind of accent on, on the consonants because you will know how the words sound. The good thing about Hebrew is that words are spelled as they sound. So unlike English, it's pretty easy to decipher how the word, word, word will sound. There isn't really any silent letters or anything like that, which I think is great. So I'm going to, I'm going to get started with counting. Um, I will explain the counting system. Um, it, it, it's very similar to a lot of other languages. 1 to 20, you know, kind of has its own distinct numbers. But then afterwards, when you get to 20, 30, 40, 50, it will just be like that 20, like that tens of a number, the word and, which is ve in Hebrew, and then the, um, and then the sing single digit number. So, let's get counting. Achat, Stein, Shalosh, Arba, Chamesh, Shesh, Sheva, Shmone, Teisha, Eser. That was 10. Now I'm going to go from 11 to 20. Achat estre, Stein estre, Shlosh estre, Arba estre, Chameshesre, Sheshesre, Shvaesre, Shmonaesre, Chaesre, Esrim. All right, so that was 20. Now, when we move on to 21, 22, and so forth, all we're going to do is we're going to say 20, Esrim, and then we're going to say the word and, which in Hebrew is ve, and then we're going to say that single digit that we want. So 21 will be Esrim, ve. Achat. 22 will be Esrim ve Shtaim. 23 will be Esrim ve Shalosh. And that is the same thing for all the, um, for all the other tens of numbers. So, 30 is Shloshim. 31 is Shloshim ve Achat. 32 is Shloshim ve Shtaim. 33 is Shloshim ve Shalosh. Now we're going to move on to 40. Arbaim. Arbaim, um, 41 is Arbaim ve Achat. 42 is Arbaim ve Shtaim. 43 is Arbaim ve Shalosh. Now let's move on to 50. Chamishim. Uh, 51 is Chamishim ve Achat. Chamishim ve Shtaim. And so forth up to 59, which is Chamishim ve Teisha. Now we're going to go on to 60. 
which is shishim. 61 is shishim ve'achat. 62 is shishim ve'shtaim. 63 is shishim ve'shalosh. Now we're going to move on to 70. Shivim. Now let's move on to 71. Shivim ve'achat. Shivim ve'shtaim. Shivim ve'shalosh. All the way up to 79 with shivim ve'tesha. Now we're going to move on to 80. Shmonim. Shmonim. Now let's move on to 81. Shmonim ve'achat. Shmonim ve'shtaim. Shmonim ve'shalosh. Now let's move on to 90. Tishim. Let's move on to 91, 92, 93. Tishim ve'achat. Tishim ve'shtaim. Tishim ve'shalosh. All the way up to 99. Tishim ve'tesha. And 100 is mea. Mea. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, one thing that I didn't go over is that Israel has quite a distinct sound that comes from the throat. It's kind of similar to an H, but it's not. It's a H sound. So um, if you heard me say Ahat, it's Ahat. A lot of people have a difficult time making that sound. It comes pretty naturally to me. But I say you just have to practice. It comes from the throat. And it's kind of like... Maybe you gotta like imagine you're gargling or something. I'm not sure, but uh, I'm not a linguist. But um, I'm pretty sure you guys heard it when I was counting. So that's just something to keep in mind. And I hope you guys really enjoyed this. I will try to make sure that there's numbers appearing as I was counting. Um, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.